Hey guys, it's Dora with Tactical Hive. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about retaining weapon systems, weapons retention. Um, not shooting from retention, actually storing and retaining weapon systems on your person so they can be brought into use as need be. I used several different uh, methods throughout my career, so stay tuned and we'll get into it. Hey guys, today's video is brought to us by Sonoran Desert Institute. They're a big supporter of the channel. And um, if you are looking to get into gunsmithing or have been in gunsmithing and just want to, you know, take your skills to the next level, I highly recommend the Sonoran Desert Institute. My personal gunsmith is a graduate from that program. And um, I could definitely tell the difference in his ability and expertise once he had uh, finished up with the course. So check them out in the description below and uh, let's get into it. All right, guys, so today's video, it's all about retaining weapon systems. Um, primary, secondary, tertiary, whatever you got, you know, you need to be a way to safely retain it to your body and keep it close to you so it isn't hitting anything, anybody, getting snagged on things, um, especially if you're going to and from different platforms or, you know, defying gravity in some way. You definitely don't want to eat this thing, so you need to have it retained to your person. Starting out, I went ahead, I have the on-plate carrier um, modified helo lanyard method. And basically, I've got a helo lanyard, same as this, girth hitch through the back uh, right side of my plate carrier, and then it wraps around to the front, and I secure it right here to a carabiner that I use to put my fast rope gloves on. So this D-ring holds two purposes, fast rope gloves and retention. I keep it on my support side, back behind my arm out of the way because I don't want this thing on my right side because that's where my pistol lives, my secondary. And I do not want this thing to impede my ability to get to my pistol. I used to have it on my right side and it could shift over and block my pistol. And that is completely unacceptable. You need to be able to get this to this thing at a moment's notice and there can be absolutely nothing impeding you at any time. Because transitioning to pistol or going from the holster, that's an emergency procedure. So having something covering up my pistol would be like something obstructing my reserve parachute or my ability to inflate my life jacket, et cetera. So for that reason, I always go, I always put my primary on my left side. I haven't carried a tertiary weapon system in quite some time, but when I did, I would generally run that all the way back on the right side to be out of the way of this thing, the primary. And that would be a shotgun or a grenade launcher, something along those lines. But those days are probably long gone behind me. So, but this is how, when I left the job, is how I had it set up. It ran along the left side here. It was out of the way. You know, you could, you know, shake it around, work with it, get it to where you needed to. I like to run it underneath the magwell to make sure it doesn't snag down. And that frees up the sling. The sling is not tight, it's not uncomfortable, it's not choking me. The weight of the weapon is actually being supported by the retention strap, and I just go with the single means. In order to get to it, you just gotta trace your body down, find the pull lever that releases the clasp, just like so. And I go ahead and just bring this thing in the bear, same as it ever was. And then put it back, you know, just fi find it, get it stowed. Again, I use the, uh, that's what I use this D-ring for. I threw the uh, fast rope gloves on here just to show you it had dual purpose. But that's how I left the job. Before that, the on-body um, helo lanyard style retention strap was very DIY. You know, this is a purpose-built helo lanyard. I have it wrapped up in black um, athletic tape. Why? Because it's chrome. Why they bought us chrome tactical gear so we could wear out in the freaking world while we're trying to be sneaky and unnoticed, I'll never know. But uh, so I wrapped this one up in plastic. I did use this one a little bit. It's got some fraying and use on it. But this one is pretty much exactly what I have on my plate carrier. You go ahead, pull the tab, pops open, go ahead, closes and locks on itself. And uh, this end is just designed to attach to whatever you need to. I just go ahead, girth hitch it through itself on this loop through my molly. And um, that's all I need it for. It just needs to support the weapon. I'm not gonna support my body weight with my weapons retention lanyard. That's not what it's for. But uh, this is the Hilo lanyard method and that is currently what I'm running on this rig. This one I don't have uh, camouflage. It just has the chrome. Again, why would you buy guys doing my last job chrome? 
don't get me started on, on supply. But anyway, and then when I'm not using it, I generally just clip it back on here anyway. And just so I know where it is and it runs right underneath my side plates. Back before that, we had an on belt retention system. These were very popular when I first came in. This is actually a Gen 2. The Gen 1s were black and made by uh, CQD or Close Quarter Defense, which was a brand. They were replaced by these. This one's made by Tactical Assault Gear. And basically you can run it on either side of your body and uh, it has the uh, belt loops here. And you can run the weapon system in it just like so. You're gonna have to figure out how to make it work for you. But the idea behind it is you stick it on the belt and it hooks right in. You can run it to the front, you can run it to the rear, however you want. And basically you would retain the weapon system on your belt without the use of your primary. As I was coming into the community, we were leaving the put everything on the belt and thighs era and making use of the mandatory plate carriers that everybody was now wearing. So these kind of went the way of the dodo, but they kind of had a second life with breachers and grenadiers because this is a great way, you know, you can stick this thing backwards way back here along your side and you could stick your grenade launcher in there, your breaching shotgun in there. And that's what I ended up really using these for. I was always a, a fan of the, uh, on the play carrier, on the torso, Hilo lanyard style retention straps, but I did use these for shotguns and grenade launchers. This tape on here, um, which is a throw over for when I did use this thing, actually had very strong breacher magnets inside of it. And the breach, you, all you had to do was get your shotgun or your M79 or whatever it was back in here and the magnet would just clamp onto it and it would secure it enough to where you could get, get back on with your job because you might be in a super big hurry. You might not have time to find this dog-eared with a zip tie and more rigorous tape to get it fully secured. Obviously you'd start the night off like that, but the, um, the breacher magnets as they were called was just an added bonus that we would use. This uh, is a maritime colored or ranger green version. It's smaller, more streamlined. The earlier ones were smaller because they didn't have a lot of SOP mod. The guys that originally used these were primarily running MP5s and and or slick M4 variants. But once SOP mod and wrist rails came out, we needed them to be, you know, wider, more purpose built for modern weapon systems. That being said, the final generation of these I got issued, which I never really used, was this one's in uh, the AOR2 pattern, which replaced these, is small but large enough. It's pretty elastic, so you can get a modern weapon system in there. But by the time these came out, I believe Guys, we're really only using these again for shotguns and grenade launchers. I never saw anybody in the 2010s, much less the 20s, running one of these for their primary weapon system, which was almost always an AR variant. But they do work. They're inexpensive. You know, you can pull them on and off your belt. And honestly, if all I had was this to retain my weapon, it would be good enough for what I needed it to. You never know when you're gonna have to stow your weapon. You might have to climb. You might have to control a fall out of an aircraft or whatever. Um, you may have to do prisoner handling. You may have to conduct a search. You may need to run a tool like a, a chainsaw or a quickie saw. You may need to bring demolitions or, you know, a tertiary weapon system like a rocket or, you know, something along those lines. You need to be able to secure your weapon system for prolonged periods and keep it out of the way. All these will work for that. And then again, carrying those tertiary weapon systems, grenade launchers, pistol grip pumps, these things are awesome for. So if you do run a shotgun, it's not your primary for breaching purposes or whatever it is, um, picking up something like this, I highly recommend it. It goes right on the belt, like I said, just don't impede Mr. Secondary here. You need to be able to get to this thing. It is an emergency procedure switching to pistol. So it needs to happen as fast and consistently correct as possible. All right, guys, so that was just a quick, uh, down and dirty of how to retain primary weapon systems or maybe even tertiary weapon systems onto your person. You don't want to rely on just your sling because for any number of reasons, you know, you hit this thing starts swinging around, you're, you know, you could damage it, you could damage somebody else or their equipment and you'd be flagging people. Uh, you definitely don't want to catch a muzzle spinning around in a tussle in the face or anywhere else. It could leave a lasting mark, to say the least. So being able to keep these things secure to your person out of the way is a must. 
in a tactical setting. That's just my two cents, guys. Um, this is some of the stuff that has worked for me throughout my time dealing with this kind of equipment. But at the end of the day, you got to figure out what works for you. And uh, the only way you're going to be able to effectively do that is to train. So I hope this helps. You know, it's a good starting point. You, maybe you can try some of this stuff out, but definitely get out there onto the range, get out there into the world and um, see what works for you guys. Because ultimately, you know, here at Tactical Hive, it's all about finding the solution. And, you know, no two people are exactly the same. So, you know, take my word for it. Do some digging, do some research, put in the effort and figure out what really works for you. And if you liked this video, you know, go ahead, give it a like, subscribe if you haven't already done so and make sure to hit that bell. You know, we've got a video a day, damn near. If you haven't uh, already done so, check out our back catalog because we've got, I think over a thousand videos now. Charles, how many do we got? Something like that. Yeah, dude, it's gotta be getting close to a thousand. It's, we're relentless. So until next time, guys, this is Dora with Tactical Hive, out.